right, Collector's Maze, look who we have. It is Marjane Holden. And you know, you guys know how it goes. We let our guests introduce themselves and kind of just give you the rundown. So Marjane, uh, tell people where we would know you from and what you've done. We yes, asked the face might look familiar, but you might not be able to put together. I am Marjane Holden and I have been so fortunate to play the legendary Shiva in the Mortal Kombat um, franchise in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I have also done lots of television in the form of sitcoms like the Steve Harvey show and Wings and Suddenly Susan, way back in the day, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, my uh, action pictures have spanned through like Hostage with Bruce Willis and I've done some sci-fi crusade as Dr. Sarah Chambers and uh, the television series Beastmaster, The Legend Continues. Yep, good old and then a whole bunch of other stuff tons. in the stunt realm as well, but. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're doing the 30th anniversary of Mortal Kombat. I have to ask about Mortal Kombat first, obviously. Okay. So my first question is, and I'm sure everybody else is like, uh -huh. how did you have four arms? Like, how did that work out? What were the logistics with that? It was very interesting because I was actually the only actress that came in that had four arms, just some random birth thing. No, not really. <laughs> no. Um, almost. So, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Close. My acting's a little off. That was great. It's not that convincing. Um, so... The way in which that worked was we had um, molded practical arms and I had a harness underneath my costume, which they could lock the arms in. So I went through a series of, of body casting in order to get those arms so that they were exactly like my arms. And for stationary shots, they would use those. And then we did a whole lot of uh, tracking um, on green screen okay. so that my motion they did motion capture so they captured all the motion of my arms so that they could cgi them in later mm -hmm. um in the shots where you see us all on the top of the temple and the arms are going like this that was all cgi okay. but if it's sort of like a static shot you can you can go back and look and see like oh those are real those are the practical ones and oh those are cgi right i like it i get a lot yeah. so Tell, give, like, just talk about that experience. Uh, how much acting had you done prior to Mortal Kombat and how did all of that help you in the run with Mortal Kombat? Right, okay, so that was, let's see, when did I audition for that in, I think it was 90, it was 97 that we shot that. Okay. And I had already been in LA since 1987. Oh, wow. I had gone my, let's see, I got my first role in 1985 on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And I was working production on that and ended up getting the role. So that's what led me to LA. And when I got to LA, I had a job for probably three months. I worked as a tour guide of a Universal Studios. Oh, cool. And after that, I was like, you know what? Nah, that's it. I'm just going full out into acting and modeling. And that was, that was it. You know, that was just, that was it. Mm -hmm. And got some great agents and they sent me out and I just worked it. You know, I worked a really hard at auditioning all the time or as much as, you know, as was available, you know, at the time. So I was auditioning constantly and just really fortunate to have great acting coaches to be able to guide me in being, you know, as an example, I had an audition for one line in a movie of the week, one line. And, you know, the actors, the old time actors always say there's no small parts. There's only small actors. Right. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's just one line or not, because if it's just one line, they wrote the line for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I took that one line into my acting coach and worked it because we would always bring our auditions into acting class and we would always work with our coach, you know, to make sure that we were ready for the audition. And I went in and I worked that one line, worked that one line, worked that one line and got the part. And the producer said to me, you know, you wouldn't believe how many actors couldn't read one mm -hmm. line. 
And I was like, wow, that's so fascinating. And I was like, really? And they were like, oh, hmm. you have no idea. Hmm. You know, because some actors think, oh, it's only one line and it's no big deal. As opposed to, you know what? I got one line, I got one shot and I'm going to own this line. It sounds like a mentality right? thing. Go in that you yeah. put your all into something, get something yeah. out of it. You know, and the, so when it came time for Mortal Kombat, um, I had been sort of already training martial arts at that time. And the stunt coordinator that was working on it, Jeff Imada, him and I had been trying to work together for a while. And so he was the stunt coordinator on that until it came time to shoot. And then he actually went on he, it, and to do something else because it oh, overlapped wow. and conflicted because the dates got changed and pushed. Yeah. So my manager at the time pushed and pushed and pushed to get me in there pushed and pushed and he was like yeah you gotta see her you gotta see her you gotta see her right and so I went in auditioned the first time got a call back went in for a call back got another call back went in again another call back I I auditioned seven times wow seven times for producers before I actually booked it wow and it was just you know try this do this do this you know but I was like I'm getting this part that's it you know because there there just weren't any other you know I was like this is it like I have to be in the Mortal Kombat (laughs) world right like I have to be. Yeah. And at that time, there were only two of them. This was only the second one. Yep. So, but the game was so hugely popular Massive. that I was like, what an opportunity. Mm-hmm. What an opportunity, you know? Absolutely. So yeah, I worked my butt off for that one. Absolutely. So you went in and said, I want Shiva. This is this is the role I want. Yeah. I'm going for this. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So you yeah. said martial arts background. I have to ask mm-hmm. about that as well. What all are you tra- all martial arts are you trained in? How long have you been training? Are you still training? Not still training. I trained pretty much most of the 90s, okay. right? All the way up until like 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. I trained Kung Fu. Okay. Um, one Hop Kundo Kung Fu to be specific. Um, a combination of Northern and Southern styles. And, you know, it really... It really helped me so much. You know, I trained with my Sifu in LA and it was great because it afforded me the opportunity to not only do my own fights and everything when I was acting, but it also opened up doors to do fights just as stunt as a stunt woman, mm-hmm. right? Because there really too. weren't any, there weren't a, there weren't any six foot tall black stunt females that's true period. too. that's true too <laughs> you know period it was Absolutely. like i was like oh i get an acting job and they're like who's gonna double you nobody <laughs> because there wasn't anybody to double me right i mean there were a few actors or some women that did double me but not doing the things that i would naturally do myself okay. right yeah absolutely. like so if there, you know i happen to have to ride a motorcycle and had to do it well that's not what i do so they brought somebody in to do that. Um, but yeah, and I don't train currently. Um, I'm more transitioned from when I, when I stopped training in LA and I transitioned more into just doing like boxing and, you know, sort of just hitting the bag and doing that kind of workout because I really enjoyed that and would work with a boxing trainer in LA. Okay. And then when I left LA, I would just, you know, train on my own. Or when I was down in Australia working on Beastmaster, I just went to the gym and and just worked on, you know, hitting the bag myself, you know, as opposed to dropping into, you know, another martial arts class. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of different when, like, when you leave, especially when you have a seafood that you've worked with forever, it's tough to go from class to, to someone else and doesn't always transition well so right makes sense absolutely (laughs) exactly exactly so beastmaster was filmed in australia yes uh talk talk about your role in that because i feel like that probably was a a lot of fun especially with like how long it ran and how many episodes you did so talk kind of talk about that experience a little bit so i 
um, at the time was married to an Australian and I knew Tom McSweeney, who was the stunt, uh, which was the casting director, right? So he was like, oh my God, you can work in Australia. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, let's, let's have you audition and bring you in. And he, and he introduced me to an agent. So I had a great agent and they're like, we have this character that we're introducing and she's a bad guy. And I was like, cool. Awesome. <laughs> let's yeah you know and my girlfriend Mon uh, Monica was already working on the show and I was like this is awesome I get to work with Monica and this is great you know so they hire me as this bad guy arena and they didn't anticipate really having such a um, great response to the character mm -hmm. but at the end of the season, they were like, okay, so we want to bring you back for next year, but we got to make you a good guy now. So, because if we keep you as a bad guy, we got to kill you and we don't <laughs> want to really kill you. So we're going to transition you to the, the good side. And I was like, cool, that's great. You know, and you know, they sort of like said, oh, it'll be like maybe, you know, seven, seven episodes or eight episodes or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but they did 22 episodes mm -hmm. a season. And I ended up doing, I think, 14 or 15 or, or more episodes because they were just like, oh yeah, now she's good. So we can keep her in more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So working with Monica, a lot, a lot of people talk about working with their friends. I actually just talked to Bob Clendenin and he talked mm -hmm. about working with, uh, with uh, Zach Brav and stuff like that. Uh, explain how, another, just another side of it, explain how much it means to you to get to work with a friend. It's like, it's just gold. <laughs> it is gold. I mean, there is, of course, that you make friends as you're shooting, mm -hmm. but to already have known somebody and to, to drop into working with them on something, oh man, like we had the best time because if we weren't on set and we weren't working, we were out hanging out together, right? And we were out doing stuff in Australia together. Yeah. And it was just really, like, it was just so much fun because both of us, we came off of us, you know, we met each other on a soap opera. Oh, wow. Okay. So we met each other on the bold and the beautiful. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't really, yeah. And then okay. ended up and, and became friends on the bold and the beautiful. Wow. Yeah. And then ended up working together on Beastmaster and have been friends ever since. That's awesome. You know, and it's just one of those things, even if you lose touch and you don't talk to each other for a while, it's like, you're, you're still friends. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Just like, just like all of the Mortal Kombat, yep. you know, cast. it's like, we did Mortal Kombat together. We went through a lot. And afterwards we all just remained friends <laughs> absolutely especially uh um, so, yeah especially you and uh the legendary motaro you guys are probably in makeup together for a while too right yes yep. like him and i the longest makeup on set you know you know everybody else sort of like you know the baracas you know they put a mask on and then glue them down and yeah. whatnot you know but for us we were in actually you know he had the horns and i had all the stuff on my face and you know down the tattoos down the arms yep. like and there was no oh here we're just gonna you know put on a fake tattoo and peel it off no, they painted them face. every day oh, man. every day <laughs> how many hours every day how many hours would that take so it was about two to three hours a day oh, wow. in makeup and then how yeah. long how long for shooting like you know, it just would depend okay. like what we were shooting on the day. Sometimes it could be, you know, six hours, sometimes 10, wow. sometimes 12. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They were long days, really long days. And we shot six days a week. Wow. When we were shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Six day work week, one day Take off. Take that new age actors. Nobody's working that hard right now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Not You're not anymore. getting up in the middle of the night. Call time at four o'clock in the morning in a temple in Thailand where they don't allow um, certain things. Wow. Right? Okay. Like yeah. they don't allow, they wouldn't allow fire so or, or electricity. So mm. they had to use those little steri cans to heat the food and sometimes not even that. And so it was like, hey, yeah, this is cold again. Oh, well, oh, we're no. in a temple and that's what 
yeah, you know, that's what you do. Yeah, because I guess you know, like there's the nothing that can compare. Right? Yeah, just, to just the experience. Case. Yeah, that's yeah, that's incredible. So yeah, that answers another question. They, they shot on scene in Thailand. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, we shot in Thailand. We shot in um, the studio stuff was done in the UK at the old Pine Pine Gap Studios. Okay, and which was is was converted from an old Mercedes Benz factory, huh. which was super cool. Yeah, um, for for some of it. I mean, of course, we did have stage stuff in uh, Thailand as well. Yeah, and then we had then we shot in Jordan and we shot in Amman. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that makes a so lot really of sense. Cool location. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Go, I'm going back through the scenes that they're going. Okay, so the Thailand stuff that looked like Thailand was Thailand, and then the desert yep. stuff was in Jordan. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and it was really fascinating because I didn't get to shoot in Jordan and Oman, okay. but yeah. it was the first time that they had had like they had extras from Jordan, they had extras from Oman. Mm-hmm. Those two countries, you know, had been fighting for yeah. like thousands of years. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like. We're fighting. Why? I don't. I don't know. But it's been. Su- it's my been grandfather long. and your grandfather fought. So I guess we're fighting too. You know, yeah. just stuff like that. That's yeah. incredible. That yeah. is incredible. So, for all the nerds out there, yeah. everyone it's- knows you might you might have popped up in Star Trek one episode. Uh, do you? Yeah. Like, was that like? I I I talk to a lot of people who do like one offs and and some stuff. How was it doing a one-off in Star Trek? Because everybody's, you know, it's a long-running series. Yeah. Do you feel like the new kid on the block when you walk on set like that? Or or do they make you feel welcome? Or how did that go? Well, that was another funny story. So another one of my friends, <laughs> Tom, him and I had known each other for a couple of years. Okay. We both got cast in that same episode. Oh, cool. I had been trying to get on any of the Star Trek you know, sets forever. Right. My manager had kept pushing and pushing and pushing to get me on set for any Star Trek franchise, you know, because they're like, she's like, she's six feet tall, you know, <laughs> like she can be a, a Klingon, she can be a Borg, she can be something, I mean, any, you know, any alien anything race, yeah. alien, right? Yeah. And they just would never call me in, never call me in, never call me in. But my brother used to work in production. Okay. And so when he worked as a production um, coordinator on shows, he would always take my picture <laughs> into his office. And he worked on a show called Jake and the Fat Man. And he had my picture in the office. And the producers were like, who's that? And he's like, oh, that's my sister. She's an actress. And they're like, we have to call her in. We have to call her in for a job. So they called me in for a job. They gave me a job on Jake and the Fat Man. So fast forward to Deep Space Nine, same producers. Oh, wow. I did not know that. The producers called me in. Wow. And said to the, said, called me straight into producer session without even having to pre-read. And they were like, oh, Marcin, they were so excited to see me again because they had already cast me. Well, when they called me in for that producer session, the director of that episode, his name was Michael Vihar. And Mike Vihar had done a ton of the Star Trek worlds, Mm -hmm. okay? But he had also done a ton of the Babylon 5 franchise. So he hired, he was like, I love her. Let's hire her. And the producer, yes, let's hire her. So they gave me the job on Deep Space Nine. Well, the Deep Space Nine job turned into Crusade Mm -hmm. because Mike Vihar was the director of the pilot of Crusade and was like her. So it was just this amazing, phenomenal, you know, like you can't make this up right? No, no, not at all. But the, but the, but the Deep Space Nine, to get back to the Deep Space Nine episode, because it was, we were on Empok Noor, and there, and it was like an abandoned station, mm-hmm. there weren't a whole lot of cast members from the franchise on it. It was like we were, it was all guest stars and one main character. So, all of us were just, you know, guest stars together, you You know? So it was, it was like 
this is what we're doing. This is who we are, right? And um, yeah, so there was this immediate camaraderie. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, like I said, doing the one-off sometimes, you don't know, you get that, that feeling? So I'm glad that worked out that way. So yeah. you worked on Crusade, you did Babylon 5, you did... Yeah so much <laughs> you've done so much you've done I some had iconic a great series career. yeah you've worked on I, you were on er once yeah uh looks like just everything jag yeah. hanging yeah. with mr cooper like everything yeah. tales of the, for, with the crypt so yes like how does that make you feel being able to just be able to walk on to something like that something so iconic and just meld in you know it it everything that i've done or pretty much for the most part, most of the things I've done, like you said, the iconic stuff like Tales from the Crypt, um, that job came because there was an episode where the two girls had to fight. And the stunt coordinator, I knew the stunt coordinator, and he had gotten me my first stunt job, which was on speed doubling somebody on the bus but this was but I was still acting and he was like oh I know you're this big actress and whatnot he goes but he goes we can use you as a stunt woman that's awesome. and I was like well how does that work and he's like well it's the same pay you know you, you'll work more as a stunt woman and I was like cool I'm all up for working so he got me my first stunt job and then when this episode came up he was the stunt coordinator on Tales from the Crypt and was like hey, I know an actress that can actually fight and you might want to bring her in. So the producers brought me in and the, you know, I was playing opposite Mark Dacascos and Mark and I had dated for like four years. Wow. We weren't dating anymore. And they were like, oh, but is that going to be weird? And both of us were like, no. <laughs> because there was supposed to be tension in the relationship anyways. So it was hilarious. So we got to work together That's on nice. that and, and it just all worked out and all my fighting skills got to be put into play in that as well. So That's yeah, it was so really great. cool. That's so great. <laughs> like everyone talks about it's, it's who, you know, but it's also who you work with and how, working yes. well with people that yeah. you know. So yeah. Margie, we're almost wrapped up. Let's do okay. one big wrap up at the end. First, Tell me what you're working on now and what you see yourself doing in the future. Oh my gosh. I'm working on so much. Mm -hmm. It's like, first of all, there was like nothing happening and now there's like everything happening. So film wise, I'm working on a project called Instruments of Justice, which is a comedy action, um, multi-formatted, uh, limited run series uh, where four veteran cops go undercover to bust a drug and trafficking ring, but they're undercover as a 80s rock band and a bad one at that. Instruments, Instruments. of justice. Interesting. Yeah. Are you acting in so, that or what, what are you doing with that? No, nope, I'm not acting in that. I am directing and I'm producing wow. and it looks like I'll be writing most of it as well. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so it's a big project and you know, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun because we're going to add all the comedy in there of, you know, like the whole, uh, relationship between like the Shobs and the Hobbs and Shore guys and the other guys and sort of like the A team all kind of wrapped up into this scenario, um, where these two teams of veteran cops, you know, have very different styles of working, but have to work together mm -hmm. and adapt to, you know, each other's working styles and then later on in the series they'll kind of be going head to head and pitted against the younger cops that are in going yeah you're just an old man you can't even do this stuff anymore so then it will become this whole you know uh young versus experience type go. of thing yeah yeah awesome. so there's that and i'm you know, fulfilling my role as mom right now with my daughter, she's 16. Oh, wow. And I'm also working on a lot of personal growth stuff. So I'll have a mentorship 
group coming in in this in September oh, wow. and have been teaching courses all over the world and loving that and giving back and making sure people get aligned with their sacred gifts and get their superpowers out there into the world. And so, yeah, so I'm doing that. And I have a, a, a love for horses and for all things rodeo. So I do a lot of going to rodeos and learning um, a new technique called, uh, for myself, a new technique called theta healing. So eventually I'll be working in giving rescued horses theta healing to help them energetically move into a place of, of peace. That's so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. So there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, but it sounds, <laughs> sounds absolutely incredible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Marjean. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank oh, you so much. thank you. This is a blast. No, I hope everybody enjoys it. Oh, they will. They thank you all for tuning in. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, if you want to see this or see anything else uh, that Marjean's doing, I'll make sure to link her Instagram and everything below. Uh, thanks again, Marjean. Appreciate you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank oh, you. Bye.